So following on from Nigel's work on the bathing platform uh, last week or the week before, um, I've got to cut off the lip and the two side handles um, so that we can start look, look towards painting and finishing off that area of the boat. Let me show you the bit that I'm talking about. So these two side handles are mild steel um, and they're fine, but they're a little bit corroded at the bottom and they're actually slight, welded on slightly in the wrong place. So I'm gonna cut these off and we're gonna make new ones of these out of stainless. And then this little lip that you can see here, the original top for the bathing platform was plywood, uh, which was a terrible idea. Um, so we've replaced it with some steel, as you've seen, but what I've got to do is snip off the lip here because as, you, as is already happening, um, we're actually getting rainwater pooling here um, because the steel is thinner than the plywood top that was on there. So I'm going to start by just cutting off these handles and cutting off the little lip along the edge. So step one of that job is complete. There's the, one of the handly things and there's the other one on the other side. These are just mild steel galvanized pipe and they're okay, but they were actually in the wrong place. One of them was welded about half an inch lower than the other, which was just looked really odd. Uh, so we're gonna make new ones of these out of stainless and probably bind them in some really nice uh, cord or something so they're not hot to hold. Um, my next step, uh, now that I've cut the lip off of the bathing platform there, my next step is to grind that flush and then probably uh, I'm going to have a go with the stick welder putting a cap weld in, uh, a pretty cap weld so that I can ground a really nice radius over the edge of that so that the water just runs off the bathing platform neatly. So yeah, that's, step, that's the next step. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to grind it flat and then go over it again if I need to. But my stick welding's improving. Well, the edge of the step is all ground. Oh, it's a bit windy. I'm not sure if that's going to... I've got a dead cat on the mic, but it might be no good. I'll show you. There's the edge of the step that comes off the cockpit itself. And there's the edge of the step that comes off the bathing platform. So now the water should drain straight off the platform, off the cockpit, onto the bathing platform and straight off the deck. Obviously I've removed the plastic hatch from there for now. I'm gonna give it a clean up, a tidy up, and then I'm just gonna try, I might not be able to, but I'm gonna try and get some paint on there to protect it uh, until I can get back to it.
there's another little job done. There you go. Um, there's our, I can't step on it because it's wet paint, but there's our bathing platform painted out with the first coat of primer. That's only the primer. Um, it's very good stuff, this primer. Um, and I've just used what was left over for this back bit of the cockpit. So there's no point throwing it away, was there? So um, let me just see if I can show you that from a better angle. There you go. There's our bathing platform. The openable lid thing, I'm gonna take home with me because it's black. I got that one second hand off eBay um, and I, I was gonna just put up with it, but I don't like it. I'm gonna buy a white one because I think it'll fit in there better. And then of course, well, there'll be a top coat and then grippy Kiwi grip or something on there as well. Um, and then of course, we've got other stuff to fit on there like uh, some wind steering that's coming up in a future episode and, um, and other bits and pieces courtesy of Nigel. Right, uh, there's another job done. be wondering where I'm off to or what I'm up to and no I haven't ditched the boys to go and sail off around the world on my own um, but what I have done is gone down to Dartmouth to do my day skipper um, training course for a week um, and also spent a few days with our friends Mike and Jane beforehand on their boat. In this clip we're just going from Dartmouth um, through Start Point uh, round to Sulcombe Bay for the night. Mike and Jane have a beautiful Benetove 343 with a lifting kill. This is the boat that I'm going to do my day skipper on um, and Jane's going to do her competent crew on. Andy and Mike organised a company called Power Sail Training to actually come aboard um, their boat and do the training um, for us and it was just going to be Jane and I during the week so really sort of one-to-one -one, um, competent crew and one-to-one -one day skipper which is amazing. The wind will blow us onto this. Beautiful morning. I'm here in Sulcum um, Bay. I think it's Sulcum. No, I think it's called Sulcum Bay. I know it's Sulcum um, on a pontoon um, on the boat that I'm actually going to be doing my day skipper on. I've come down for a couple of days um, sail with some friends who own the boat, um, and it's absolutely beautiful here. Um, I'm talking really quietly because um, in front of us there's um, two wayfair dinghies with people camping in, in them. Um, there's actually one guy that slept on the pontoon last night and it was bloody freezing, so fair play to them. This is us coming back into Dartmouth and then going to um, a little anchorage in Stoke Abram for a barbecue. Yeah. Oh god that's tight. So we just got back from our, my two day, oh this is the third morning practice sale before, our, before my um, day skipper course tomorrow. 
um, but just had to come into the marina um, stern two and it in birth stern two so I've never done that before <laughs> it was really scary um, but I did it and I didn't on the first attempt and I didn't hit anything so it's all good. <laughs> so the instructor joined us last night and that's it we're off the course has started. I see a ship. Water Plymouth minus five and a half hours and the ebb at high water Plymouth plus three quarters. Right, so we've um, come to the end of our first day of the day skipper course and we're in where are we Jane? Brixham. Brixham. We're in Brixham um, Marina and um, we came round from Dartmouth and then tomorrow we're going to Tynmouth and then to where? Talking. To talking. <laughs> I don't know this coastline that well. Um, so, but no, it's been a really good day. We've um, just did some manoeuvres and stuff in Dartmouth River, and then sailed round here. And then we've just been doing a passage plan for tomorrow. Where's Painton? Oh, <laughs> that's Painton. <laughs> Now, during the week, I was really busy concentrating on the course and absolutely useless at filming. Luckily, I had some eyes on shore um, and Andy logged on to the CCTV cameras to watch me in the marinas. No pressure, um, but here's me just springing off a um, pontoon in Tynmouth. Then later on in the evening in that day, we went into Torquay Harbour. Here's me spinning around in a circle, uh, waiting for my berth. During the rest of the week, we did lots of different manoeuvres, picked up mooring boys, um, man overboard, um, some night nav, um, lots of sailing. Um, we were quite lucky because the weather was quite varied, so we got quite a lot of wind, so we got to have some nice fun sails um, around the southwest coast, um, but it was absolutely great fun. It was the boost that I needed um, to spur me on and now get lots of work done on Melody so we can get in the water and go. Jack and I drive <coughs> down here uh, the day before yesterday and we've been fetching some steel tubing for our solar arch which Nigel is going to build. and. Um, that was in Devon, no, in Cornwall, somewhere. Anyway, um, I'll show you all that steel in a bit. But the other reason that we've come down here is to meet Melissa, who has been doing her, um, her day skipper practical course um, on our friends Benito. So I didn't get to film much, well, any of this week really. There might be a couple of little clips, um, but it was full on, but it was amazing. I've had the best week ever. I passed my day skipper. Um, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Jane and Mike for letting me um, do it on their boat. And uh, Jane has been amazing. She's been great. Um, who also, she passed her competent crew. So well done, Jane. You've been, you were a great crew. Um, and a big thank you to Lara at Power Sail Training. Um, it, she was an amazing instructor. Definitely recommend them um, down on the southwest coast. Um, if anyone wants any details, just um, we'll put the link in the description to the company. But especially for females, if they want a female instructor, Lara is definitely gets a big recommend from me. Um, fountain of knowledge. So thank you, Lara. Um, but no, it's been it's been amazing. It's been a great week. The weather has been really varied, which is good because it meant that we got to go out in different different conditions. Um, so yeah, so it's been really fun. <laughs> so thank you everyone. Um, this, I'll give you a quick little tour, but this is the boat that um, I was on for the week. So she's a lovely um, Beneteau 343 with a lifting keel as well, which was really 
uh, really interesting to sail a boat that has a lifting keel because obviously Melody does. So we had the keel up for some of the time and down for some of the time. So here she is. All put to bed. And I had some surprise visitors at the end of my end of my course. There's Jack. Hey, yeah. They came to meet me. They went to pick some steel up, um, but they've also and come. Got a giant button. And Jack got a giant button. Yes. <laughs> Hiya. And there's Andy okay. and little Pippi. Um, Jane and Mike let us stay here last night, which was lovely. Mm. Um, but they've got a beautiful boat. Um, I was just saying thanks to mm. everyone and mm. stuff. Um, but it was nice to have a night a night on board on the water, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so having driven for days and days, we're now back at Nigel's, which you've never seen before, so we're going to um, deliver all of this steel uh, that we've picked up uh, and drop it off. So now is your chance to see what we've actually bought. Oh, Melissa's, Jack's walking the dog. We're going to unload the steel. Melissa's going to film us. There you go. So in bits. Well, let's see what you've got. Right. Piece number one. Right, there's going to be a lot of <gasps> ooing and ahhing. Look at that. Ooh, that's a nice piece. <laughs> yeah. That's a piece of 10 mil, or is it 10 Shiny. Mils? 8 mil, 8 it mil looks thick. Eight to me, right? 8 mil thick mirror polished steel. With dirty fingerprints on it there. Yeah. Oops. When you lay it out on the decking to start with. Yeah, we could lay it all out on the decking and then yeah, take it in the shack. Like, 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 like at Christmas. Yeah. Because it's, it's like Christmas. It is. Shiny. Yeah. That's a piece of acetal that you said you might be useful for something. Yep. So it may be no good to us, but you can have that. What is it? It's, um, it's machining plastic. Ah. Right. <laughs> actually got we'll go through all of that in a minute we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine nine of the slightly ten. smaller ten. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, okay nine of those uh, and uh, we'll get the calipers and have a look at what they are have you got some calipers yep they are 30 mil 30 mil and what's the wall thickness looks to be quite decent like three mil and get a bit that's not got a burr on it. A burr, yeah. It's two mil. That's about absolutely fine. Yeah, two. Two mil. And then the thicker ones, we've got one, two, three, four, five. Well, these are four meter lengths, aren't they? Yeah. Well, they might even be five meters. Yeah. 38. 38. Interestingly, will that? It will go inside that, will but it go it'll be loose. But. And what's the wall thickness on that? No, no, it's fine. A nice. Brass bush. Yeah, yeah. In there. Yeah, yeah. Self lubricating. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful smooth. You mean? Are you thinking for the adjustable? For the adjustable sections. For the adjustable can... davits and etc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So we can have telescopic davits, and then we could even have a support cable. So when you pull them out, you have a cable to take some of the strain off the top. You may, if, I don't think you'll don't need, think it. You'll need not, it. Not with with my welding and the design. <laughs> there you go. Well. No. So um, we've got a load of this composite board, which we're not going to use for the um, exterior. This will be to panel out the inside of one of the lazarettes. We've got some mirror polished plate, which is going to be used for gussets and triangulation sections. <coughs> and then we've got two huge pieces of um, this flat bar. Looks like eight mil, I think. Which is? This is six, I think. Yeah, seven mil. Oh, that's no, it must be, must be there on the end. You don't get seven mil. Plate. Generally not. Yeah, six. Six mil mirror polished and flat eight. bar and eight mil flat bar. And again, there's four meters of each. And you've um, also got the other mirror polished bar. Is it under here? Oh yes, We're yeah. One. There's a beautiful... It's under these tubes, I think. Yeah, yeah look, at, look that. at that. That's what this piece will be like when you turn around. 30 by, looks like five or six. 30 by six. 30 by six, lovely. And then we've got all these tubs. So tub number one 
this is general nuts and bolts so I've got um, hex tops I've got dome head cap um, allen keys I've got these for for our chain plates yeah for three spots. three one six um, for I've got enough of those to do all of our um, bolt throughs for the chain plates I've got a load of these which are going to be to replace the ones for our mast foot so we can take the mast foot off and drill the old ones out um, I don't know if they're the right size so we might have to re-drill them and re-tap the holes yeah they're m16 so so but i just thought they'll do <laughs> even if we have to re-tap the holes he gave me a load of really nice machining drill bits which is always handy and then i just i just it was like nice a pick and mix and, and they, these are 316 as well the they're cotter all pins. 316 cotter pins Beautiful. and i got a load of li little diddy ones and bigger ones it was it was literally like a kid in a toy shop and he just said spend half an hour in here and just put whatever you want in these containers and i was like i don't know i don't know what i want it's it's all too much for me so let's have a look through the Ooh, other ones very nice. these are ones that he'd already picked out for us wow. self-tapping cap head screw they are beautiful <laughs> self-tapping cap head screws so yeah go straight into the mild steel i like they're almost like um what they call tech screws yeah they are they are beautiful I've never seen you two look so excited. I know, it's honestly, it's... <laughs> look at these, you know, all these are all 316 marine grade stainless. So I should just say, where's all this come from? Well, I bought some tube off eBay um, from a gentleman and, uh, and he's got, he said on the eBay listing, I've got loads more stuff, but give me a ring if you want to know what else I've got. And really? so I did and we got chatting and it turns out his wife is deaf like Jack and cochlear implanted like Jack and runs a cochlear imp implant community um, and they were absolutely taken by the project that we've got and he said come down and we'll just fill your van with all the stuff that you need for the stainless stuff that you, you think you're going to need for this project because he's closing his business for, for a number of reasons that I won't go into uh, so um, here you go we've got pretty much <laughs> everything that we ever need and Jack was very excited about this because he can use this to cover his wooden swords <laughs> to make them look like they're made of metal because you cover a wooden sword with it rub it and then dust over it with some black spray paint rub it off with some wire wool and it looks like a metal sword That's so, Jack's. so we're not going to film the rest of this but we're just going to look no, through the it's, boxes because it's, it's too long a piece now, but, it's um it's very boring stuff for most people oh, I'm going to admit <laughs> So thanks so, so much for watching uh, this episode of Sailing Melody. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. Please remember to like and comment and subscribe and all of that stuff. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It really does help the channel. Thanks so much to Mike and Jane for the use of their boat for Melissa's course and for looking after her. Thanks to Lara at Power Sail Training for an amazing course and experience for Melissa. And a, a huge thanks to Darren at uh, Rice Metals for the incredible stainless steel which we're going to be using to build the um, Solar Arch. See you next week on Sailing Melody.